Affinity Photo always surprises me. It's got so many great features. Now, it doesn't have everything. And of course, there's applications like Photoshop, Painter, Critter, all those ones can create amazing designs as well. But it's got a few unique features. And I'm just going to quickly go and show you this one. And this is the cyclic feature in brushes. You can create millions of different designs, such as this. So let's just remove this layer. Now, I created this brush that I'm just going to use in the previous video. So please check that previous video out if you want to find out how to create. But all it is, is this, like a little circle. That's it. Circle turned into a 3D ball. And double click. And if I reduced it back again, you could just see it's just a circle. And got a size jitter. And you can see you can modify that. But the reason it's all sort of like blobby, like blobs of ink, is because of cyclic. And that's a powerful feature. And there's a lot of great options here. But down here, cyclic. Many applications don't have this. I think it's a great feature that I think I, they should expand even more. You can see many other possibilities with it. So cyclic, and you can click here, and you can then set the profile. And you can see as you do that, it just changes profile, and you get a range of profiles right down here. You can create different designs. But you can also do exactly the same with things like the huge jitter as well, cyclic. And again, have a different profile. Don't have to have the same profile. And of course, I've gone with a circle. It could be a triangle. It could be a star. It could be all kinds of designs. So click close. Now I'm just going to apply it. Now press B. So now with that, just paint it. Now you might decide that size of brush is a bit too big. So I'm just going to reduce that down. And I'm just going to apply a brush like that. And you can see you can create all kinds of sort of, and just by touching, I'm using an art pad and pen. Obviously, it makes it a bit easier. And you can just sort of dribble there and just drag. And straight away, you've got something like that. And you can then use this. Just this is design. It's all kinds of things, which you can, of course, modify as well. So you don't have to have just that. You go to the filters. You go to distort, deform, etc. Twirl. So you've got this. Go to the brushes panel. You can find the window menu. Just go over here this menu over here on the right side and just go down here to new brush from selection so new brush from selection and it's just stored away and then you can modify it so you can double click and then you can see this design go to general you can resize it i think sometimes it's a bit too big 788 so i like to reduce it down to about 140 and then also you can modify the spacing and you can see then and the great thing about this is you can apply the brush again, press B, because it's put it back to the move. You can apply it and you can see, you can create this lovely sort of wavy design, sort of weird paint design, very quick and easy like that. And of course, what you can also do is if you close this now, just go there, close. You can always go to window and you can go to layers. So you can add maybe with this design, this layer, you can always go to effects, and you can click there, and maybe go for 3D, and you can set radius there, as well as outer shadow. So set that, and also intensity, and close. And now you've got this 3D effect. You don't have to apply the brush again. You could, of course. It would still take that style, and hold down the Alter Option key, and drag and duplicate. So you can see you can build up quite a complex design, simply by duplicating a couple of layers. But also what you can do, let's just go up here. Really great one is something like this. So I've got one created earlier, so it's just using exactly the same thing. You can see this one, it's got like a weird curl through it. So if I actually set it all back, so if I go here, dynamics, put the size jitter back and rotation jitter, you can see it's exactly, it's a circular design this time. So let's just go and create that. So to create it, simply go back to the brush that I had earlier and you could of course use other brushes as well it doesn't have to be this but just go and select that one and again press b for the paintbrush set the width and then just apply in a circular design so something like that or maybe create a spiral design you don't have to have it circular i mean it's still fairly circular and you got that well that design can then be defined 
That's a brush as well. So go to brushes, right side menu there, and down to new brush from selection. So new brush from that you can see now you've got your design there. And I can remove that again, double click, and I can change. Now I say prefer to reduce that down a bit so it's not so big. I've got a massive document open. And then I can go here to dynamics. Oh, no, general. You can also modify the spacing. So you can get the spacing so it's all sort of continuous, near enough continuous. It's not perfect, even at 1%. Unfortunately, you can't reduce it any lower. You can also rotate it. So you might say, you know what, that looks nicer. Or go that way. But you also, you can go to dynamics and you can go to size jitter. And again, cyclic. So just go there. And now you can see the results of that. And you can, of course, reduce that down. You can see that. And again, press B if you haven't got the paintbrush selected and just apply it. And you can see as you apply it, it creates this lovely sort of unusual sort of cyclical, see, going in and out brush stroke. And also you can modify the, cut, the hue. So you can do exactly the same. So set it 100% or whatever you want. Go to random, then to cyclic. And in cyclic, you can just click here on the profile and you can modify that. And you can see as you do that, you can see it squeezes those colors in or out, how it applies it. And you might think, you know what, that's perfect. And likewise, you can go up here to the brushes. So you can click there and you can modify that. So you might decide to get that design or maybe that design to create sort of weird flower designs, maybe a, a rippling effect like that. But also what you can do, go to rotation jitter. And you can see then, if you just set it to 100%, it's random, so it's just rotating it all different angles. You can modify that again by going cyclic. So cyclic, and now in cyclic, you've got that rotation, and click there, and you can modify that. So you can see it makes some parts rotate quicker, less, and so on. Create all kinds of unique brush designs. And again, go to the design, and you can now apply that very quickly. And again, cycle, you can resize that, we'll go that way, and general, reduce it down, and apply it again. And you can see, you get something like that. Also, what you can do is you can increase the size. So that's a great way of filling the document very quickly. So if you want to fill the entire document, it obviously takes a bit of time if you've got a very small brush there, you can see then, you can, let's just remove that, get that out of the way because it's filling too much of the screen. And you can see one feature I'd love to see in Infinity Photo would be automatic disappearance of the panels. So as you apply the brush, you go over it, it'd be nice if it vanished. But it could work out, you know what? I obviously don't want to block that brush stroke. And you can see then you can create all kinds of weird and wonderful designs like that. But of course, what you can also do is you can, with all these designs, you might decide, I want symmetrical designs. So then simply go to symmetry and I've got eight. So this is with the paintbrush selected. So symmetry. And now I'm just going to reduce the size a bit because it's a bit too big for symmetry. So about 90. And then just apply. make sure you keep it locked unless you want to move it because it's quite easily done accidentally. sort of. And you can see then as you, of course, it creates a sort of like fractal like design. So you've got a fractal like design like that, sort of swirls in and out like that. Also, what you can do, of course, once you've got this design, you can always go to filters and go down here to distort and mirror. So with mirror, you can set the mirror, of course. And I always like to set it like, say, at four. So you can create a lovely, like, near enough, like stained glass effect, sort of. Or maybe, obviously, you could have that as a sort of carpet. Probably a bit extreme carpet, I would have to say. Or maybe wallpaper, which I think would be pretty garish in any room. Okay, so you've got that, and you can still continue to manipulate it even more. So let's just undo that. Because another thing you can do, if you just remove all that, is you can go over here, and again, select the paintbrush. I'm just going, of course, with the first one. Don't have to, of course, go with that design. You can create literally thousands of different designs. As mentioned, all it is is a circle, like that. Set the color, oh, obviously I went with red as the start point, and then go to layers and click effects. You can do this, of course, with many, many shapes. And go here to 3D. So 3D, set the radius, and push it up like that to up 100. And then you get a lovely spherical design. 
click close. You need to rasterize it. So right click and go down there to rasterize. And then you can yeah, rasterize. You can then go over here and you can then new brush from selection. So you can just quickly save it. And you can see that's the start point. Again, you can change the cyclic size, the colors, all those things to create all kinds of unique brushes. So let's just remove that. That was the start point. So let's just go that one, one right at the top there. So there it is. Again, I'm just gonna reduce the size. So press B again for the paintbrush. Don't want the symmetry this time. I wanna reduce it down because I'm just gonna create another brush. And this time, simply just apply a brush like that. And you can create a circle design. Now you could, of course, use the symmetry but I want a more randomized design. So although that's a feature that I would love to see in Affinity, some more randomization. So it actually doesn't always have it exactly eight. So you've got eight, but you could have like eight and a half, whatever, it would be more randomized symmetry. So it would apply it, but slightly different angles each time. So it wouldn't be so perfect. And you can see, you can create a circle design and obviously let's just quickly finish it off, creating like that. And this exact same can be used and you can of course add some more now avoid going over the edge you don't want to go over the edge of the document so you just don't come over that side so you can then create this sort of design I don't know, a sort of spider-like design very unusual colorful spider but certainly a spider-like design and with that again just go over here select it and you can resize it beforehand if you want or just do it here so brushes Again, over here at the menu, click there, and then go down here to new brush from selection. And you've got that. Now it's a bit more of a complex brush. And again, you can double click on there. And this time, maybe you decide, uh, just go again to the space. Now I would like to put the space. I would love the feature where it throws the space in. So I want, always want it generally at 1%. You don't have to. But I like to have it set, so you always have to set it each and every time. It'd be nice if you could set the default so it would just always do that. But you can also go to dynamic and again go here to rotation jitter, and you can see you can create just by rotating it, you can get this like furry effect with your brush. And also, go again, you've got size jitter, you can change that. Go here to pressure and cyclic, and you can see then you get sort of these like furry ball effects. And again, you can modify the profile. So click here and you can just then resize that. Just change that to create all kinds of different sort of furry designs. And you might want to reduce it down. You might say, you know what, I don't want it too much. Or maybe go to general, reduce the size, maybe 212. So dynamics, but again, you can go here to rotation. You can also, if you want, cyclic again. But I want it this time. So want it to be random. And then go to Hue Jitter, cyclic, and then you can then go here, profile, change that as well. And you can see you can create all kinds of colorful combinations. Click close. And then just press B, the paintbrush, always ends up not being selected. And you can see then you've got a design like that very quickly thin there. And of course, once you've got that design, you can do exactly the same as before. Select it, go to filters, and then go to distort and maybe use mirror. But also you can distort it by deform as well. So you've got this design. Personally, I find that not particularly what I want. So go over here, deform, and I can add some pins. And then I can just then distort that design so I can feel, you know what, I want the colors to be sort of dragged off in different directions. Again, drag that off there, drag that off there, drag that off there. And you can literally create all kinds of unique colorful stretch designs using this approach and click apply. And often I always find that another thing that I like, once I've done it, I love sort of stretching it all over the place. I always like to go to filters and then go to repeat deform. So you can distort it a couple of times. Then you can push it too far. You end up with a slightly, obviously it gets a bit rough if you go too far. But again, is that the same filters, distort and mirror. And then you can go, this time I'm just gonna go for four again. And you've got a design like that. But you can, of course, don't have to keep it in the central part. You can move around and think, you know what, that bit's more interesting than that bit. Well, maybe that. And click apply. 
Another feature of this brush is you can go up here again. I'm just going to use this, this one. But you can go up here and press B again, get the paintbrush, double click, and you can modify the scattering. So instead of there, you can see you can make that scatter out like that. It creates a lovely little sort of game. I've got B that's selected. So now apply it. You can see you can create sort of like molecules, molecule effect. And again, because you can modify the cyclic there, let's just undo. Uh, just click there, you can see, change that. And as you change it, you get more reds, more blues, more random, etc. So literally, that sort of design. But scatter can also be with cycling. At the moment, it's just set to random. Doesn't have to be. Go to random, go put it down to cycling. And now, you can go here, you can obviously increase it. Might not want to increase it too far, so just push it to about 167. Click on the profile, and then you can then see, just move that. And you can see then, as you change that, again, click there, add some points. You can add to this profile. You can see it will, different parts will be transformed, scattered in different ways. And again, you can select some of these other profiles here. And you might decide, you know what, let's just push that up. Maybe again, general spacing is too far, so you want that. So you can see a lovely group like that. And then again, apply your brush like that, so you get sort of a weird scattering. So it sort of goes out, in and out, wave designs, etc. And also, exact same for dynamics, you can go to rotation. So rotation, and you can see you've got the rotation there, but also gain cyclic. So don't want that one, I want cyclic. You can see and create a lovely sort of like shadow-like effect using that. And you can, of course, modify it, just click here. There's rotation, there it is, click that and then change that, and you can see as you do that, different shading can be added into it. And just drag down, and click close, and apply it again. And all those sort of weird and wonderful brushes can all again be modified further using the filters. So filters, go to distort, deform, twirl, mirror, etc. You can create designs that can also be duplicated to great effect as well. So let's just come up here, and I'm going to select this one. And I don't want the, the, obviously, the scattering there. I'm just going to reduce the scattering down. You can change it back at any point. Just simply drag. I'm sort of surprised there's no sort of reset feature for each of these. Maybe there is. I don't know one. So if, if you know if there's a way of just resetting that one, obviously, other than just dragging it down to zero, obviously, that's a quick solution. But say you've got that design. And now what you can do, click Close. And let's just again, just go to B, paintbrush, and I can create very, very quick circular design like that. Sort of the droplets of color there. You can now just go over here to the move tool with the move tool selected. You can press return or enter on the keyboard and bring up the move and duplicate. And then you can go up here, duplicates. And you can set it to say 11. Let's just quickly go with horizontal. You can see, see, you can create a design like that or that way. Or maybe go with vertical. So go downwards. Or maybe change the distance. Create designs that are more unusual 3D like ring. But also, what you can do, let's just put those back to zero. That to zero and that to zero. You can also go down here to there, scale and maybe make it 96. And you can see then you get that lovely circular design going to the center. And then once you've got decided, you know what, that's pretty nice. You can put a number of copies up to say 86. What it does do, it creates lots and lots of layers. So you might like after you finish with it, you can then just simply group it and rasterize. So let's just change the rotation. So you get a nice circular design like that, a twirl design and click OK. And if you go over here to the layers, you can see it's just made up of multiple layers which you can then go to the move tool and you can select them individually. You just position it out. So you might want to create a little bit of randomization in this. Don't have to have it all uniform. You can always move that. And that's another feature that I would love to see in Affinity Photos dialog, just some randomization. So you just create something that's just a little bit more unusual. Now you might not want that and you might just want it back to exactly the lovely uniform design there. Let's just put it all the way back. And that, simply select them all, right click, and then group, and then right click, and then go down here to rasterize. 
And now you've got this design, which you can then manipulate. You can also go to filters, go to distort, deform, twirl, etc. Maybe apply another twirl to it, and you can see you can create a lovely wavy design like that. And click apply. And of course, any of these designs created with the brush can be turned into patterns as well. So let's just move that. Let's just go down to one of these ones. Let's just select, say, this one, lovely furry brush. And you can simply then, pressing B again for paintbrush, just apply it like that. And then with that design, this design can then be turned into a pattern. Simply go to layer, new pattern layer from selection and create something like that. Or, let's undo that, you can always just select part of it. Don't have to have the whole thing, so select part of that. Obviously, you might not want the gaps, so just select all of it, and then go to Layer, and down to New Pattern Layer from Section, and you've got that sort of pattern design very quickly. Go to the Move tool, press V on the keyboard, and then go for Mirror, and you've got that design. And you can, of course, resize it, apply effects still, and much, much more to create all kinds of unique repeat tile designs. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.